Hey guys, it's Mr. Jack with Triple Zero here, back with Automation, the Car Cover Tycoon game, and there is a mod on here of where you can build a um, an armored vehicle on here. This is, came out just a little while ago in the Steam Workshop. You can download, which will be listed in the description. It is an armored vehicle right here. You, you when you um, subscribe to the mod, you get three of them. It is based off the people are saying the Cadillac. Gage, uh, the Ranger, which was a 1970s SWAT vehicle, like an armored vehicle used by SWAT and VIP escorts and other like military companies and contractors, which uh, they use it for quite a uh, quite some time. And there's some police forces that still use them, probably actively or as a reserve for their SWAT team, some police departments. So let's just get things started off by um, I already got the middle one selected. But I don't know what the difference between. The 420 wheelbase, the 370, and a 276 wheelbase. I don't know if it's the actual like length of the wheelbase, because it, it looks it looks the same. I don't know if it is the length, but we'll choose the middle right here. I'll try it again. Choose the middle. Thank you. And for this, we're gonna be choosing uh, panel material. Let's make this heavy duty. Uh, let's just do corrosion resistant steel. And chassis will be ladder. Chassis material, again, corrosion resistant steel, and put a longitudinal front it. Engine placement. Whiff, it's got a good amount of weight. I believe we'll try coil and leaf suspension. Yeah, coil and leaf. Speaking of the front, is it good? And oh, yeah, really good in off road. That, that's pretty good. Okay, alright, the uh, chassis is good. Now let's go to the engine. For the engine, it's going to be based off of the Mopar 318, which was used back in the day, but they used the 360, but I looked up on Wikipedia, they said the 360 had caused a lot of overheating and speeding troubles on their vehicles, and they had to wait for the engine to cool off for quite some time, which was unfortunate for the um, the early heyday for the, um, the, the, the Ranger back in the day. So we're using the 318, I believe it's a, a V6 engine if I'm looking at it right now, let's see. No, it is a V8 engine. Let's just do a, uh, let's see if a 60 degree V8 would do it. And material, cast iron, with a bore and stroke, and this is listed in inches. Let me convert those real quick. Okay, that's been dealt with. Hopefully I don't do any more conversions throughout this video. If not, I can just exit it, just exit right now and just convert this to, uh, Imperial units. But, uh, head and valves, it doesn't even list it in anything on here. Let's just put a, let's try a, a direct acting overhead cam. Let's see if that works out. Also cast and no BBL. Uh, crankshaft. Uh, let's just do cast. Pretty much cast everything, see how it goes. Now the compression, this is listed at a 9.2 compression ratio. Cam profile, I don't know. Let's keep it at 40 for right now. There's no turbocharger on this engine. And the fuel system, it's a two-barrel carburetor. I don't know if it's a single or a twin. Let's just do a... Let's see if a single would work out. What's it like? Seems legit. Yeah, I think it was a single based on the pictures I looked at. It's not... If it's a twin, and of course, you've seen right there, it's a much longer carburetor rather than your old basic serial with the barrel at the end. Or thingy at the end, whatever. And fuel type would be, uh, just do 86 fuel. Uses regular fuel. And mixture, put this up. It's like a 13.8. And it, it revs pretty low at, uh, it goes, it's, it says on here, it maxes out at 4,400 RPM. And ignition, good enough. Uh, headers, let's do a short cast. Maybe put, let's do single for now. I don't know if I have to put dual. And Cadillac converter, two way. And do a single baffled. And it's knocking. What are we at? Not, almost at a 95 right now. Okay, that's pretty bad. Uh, let's increase the fuel mixture quite a bit before. Let's do a 13.3. Retard this quite a bit. And see what else I can do. Because this ain't looking too good, Chief. 20 minutes later. Well guys, you basically gotta cheat the system in order to get the right amount of power, but I didn't get the torque because I tried I tried everything. 
going from orbit changing to sliders, the ignition timing, and of course I can't do anything about the uh, 87 gas without completely retarding the engine and then putting up 15 everything. And it really couldn't get up close enough to match the power and the torque to uh, to what I got listed on here in the specs. I did get the power of 230 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 307 pounds feet of torque at 2400 RPM. And for that, let's just test out the engine, do an automatic and manual test, and then we'll move on with the design. Alright, so that's taken care of. Now let's just move on with the design and slap the body on it. And Jesus Christ, that's big. Well, we gotta at least get some sort of color that's not all that pops out and everything. Let's uh, let's just see steel. Yuck. Tell it gray. Well, it seems legit. Tell it black. Just beam and G black. Or not BMG automation black. <laughs> well, good enough. Alright, now let's do with the uh, design. Gotta look all militarily and all uniformly. Let's see, these. I don't need a circle, these are our LED lighting. Uh, these guys. Okay. Let's see, this. That. I mean, why do kind of look like. Oh, it's just chrome. I thought these were LED lighting. I'm like, we're not using LED lighting in the 70s. They weren't even around back then. We got the indicator set up. Let's just pick, uh, let's try this grill out. But instead, first remove the chrominess because you don't want chrome in the military. You can't be all seen out by the enemy. Like that. And you know what? Let's pick this big, huge, ominous grill to side. Yeah, like that. A little bigger. Because you know, this V8 needs some cooling. I thought that was like a little eclippingness of the body right there, but it isn't. Okay, this looks so stupid already. Not too stupid, but it's pretty much there. Okay, now, let's see. I think the, I know on the H1 Hummer, they have handles on the side of the, the front hood. Like you unlatch this, unlatch that, and then pull the hood open. So let's see, where are the handles? Right here. And there's got to be some sort of handle, like a, a serious, you grab onto a type handle, like... Let's see this. That. But there's a key. Unless we flip it 90 degrees. Uh, maybe. That can work out. But, is there a key on this? No, there isn't. Okay, that's good. So that'll be our... Our hood handle, just pull it open, just pull it to you, and then pull it upward, use your, use your other hand and push it up. That's, that's good. And now, let's see, a lock for the doors. Let's see, I don't know about this guy, or this guy, maybe this guy. One right there, and second of all, lose the chrominess, military hates chrome. Same with this guy. Military hates chrome too. That. That and... That's the door lock. Let's... Put that. So you know where you put your key in. Hand a little bit bigger. Good. Yep, fair enough. And for the heck of it, is there any running boards or no? I don't know if there is such a mod on here, which I gotta of course believe in go back in if there is such running boards on here. If not, I can deal with them. It's so probably will. And second of all, I thought I do have like a bull bar which I can put on front 
like right here, which I use on the pol on a police car. But I don't know if it's is supported on here. Which I'm gonna check right now. Yeah, I got it right here. This will do. And uh, no, not the grill. Uh, lock it. Here and grill or bull bar. Let's see. It just ex exponentially expands outward like that. That's not... Okay. Well, good news is we got a massive bull bar unless we can switch out. Okay, that's inward. And that's outward. And that's just the basic one. Good. Okay, okay one day that's just going to obstruct your view. What if I... You can't. Nope. Nope. But I'm pointing at the uh, bull bar right now, like if the seat was up here, and you got that, yeah, that's gonna be definitely in your face, you really can't see nothing. I mean, it's nice to have, but... I think the mod offer needs to, uh, correct himself on this one. At least try to edit this out. So instead of it exponentially expanding, if you just drag the left slider button or the top slider button, it'll just make the top bigger. And the sides bigger or smaller, whatever you choose, rather than pulling out all like this. And the back handles will be these guys. That put a degree angle. Yep. Yep. There you go. A little bit bigger. Okay. That's right, a little bit closer. And down there. All right. Now that's your back doors. All right. Now that's good. That's your back doors, and now. Let's find some taillights that are good enough. Yeah, bring out the super taillights. Let's just try something else. How about this little tail taillight strip in? Alright then. Yeah, I think he'll might end up uh, fixing this soon. Even putting on the license plate, it still has that little, uh, little clippiness of the body. I think I might need to address this soon. Yeah, really address this sooner or later. Good enough. Well, I guess this car is good enough. I did also change out the bowl bar and uh, just made just so I get the front bowl bar. And uh, sucks with the with the uh, mirrors. You can't put them like right up here or right up there because like if you try to do so, of course, I switch everything around. It just points straight to the hood, the mirrors, which makes them useless. So I got all that good to go. Let's uh, go with the drive type. It's going to be a four x four, of course, uh, manual. Do a do a three speed up to a, let's say eighty miles an hour top speed. Good enough. Do open locker or manual locker. Screw that. And tires. Do radial. Some chunky off roaders. And rib size. Do. 17s and rim wheel size uh, go deal down one or I think that's still fair enough yeah they're fair enough okay steelies uh, discs or brakes sorry mm. go for solid disc 2 up to 235 or 235 Another solid. Do uh, you know, just do uh, yeah, do, do two and one, up to two hundred. With fifty brake, uh, pads gonna be stay at fifty, with a sixty three thirty seven. See how that works out. And under tray, do off rotor. Brakes, yeah, cool these suckers down. Do it at thirty five because. If you're on BMG Drive, you slam the brakes on, you're gonna be fading pretty good with those brakes. And seats, try to max things out. Try an eight seater, but it'll be better if it's like these here and these there, and your car goes in the middle. Like you walk in, walk in, you, it's just what little hallway of kind of hallway, but a little alleyway of just walking in. You're gunner seat up here if you're in the military and you got hold of yourself a military contracted vehicle or you just walk right in seats there and your front seat 
you know, driver's seat, passenger seat, and it's all good. It should be something like that rather than the old conventional seating like this. Interior, uh, pretty much do standard. And do AM radio because the general needs to hear your ass what you're doing. Give you commands and orders telling him what to do. Steering, do hydraulic with some uh, advanced 70s because you need you need a lot of steel plating to uh, cover yourself from a 50 caliber rifle and springs uh, let's do see, hydrodynamic that really turns things on let's just do hydropneumatic and 22 passive okay good enough and off-road there you go red and strong understeer Try adding front front grip. Okay, so we got some wheel spin issues. Let me guess, this thing just goes... Skirt, yeah, it pretty much does. With, uh, uh, yeah, 100%, 92.2, 99.2, Help. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot cure this wheel spin by ch changing the spacing, increasing the speed, changing the wheel size, everything. So we gotta deal with 100% uh, wheel spin, gear one, and 98% We'll spin gear two and gear three. It's all perfect, fortunately. So this is gonna be our final car here. Of course, gotta change the uh, brakes because it's complaining about brake size, uh, brake force is being too low, and it's good chance of being faded out. So I just changed the vented uh, discs. Nothing's really much change. I also just changed these to two by two seats and everything. So like if they try to uh, get out of the vehicle, they got this little gap to run through and then run right out. Go from there. And of course, everything else is pretty much the same, and hello. And here it is. It's a um, Model 6 Trim 7. Okay, let's just get a, let's just get a name of this guy. I got, I've thought of a name before I made this video. Okay, so I got, like I said, I got the uh, name of the vehicle. It's called the Akrinvi. With the acronym is Aggressive Crash Inducing Wheeled Vehicle. Kind of like... I mean, just kind of like making a name joke off the Humvee. Which, of course, it's been around since the 80s and it's still being produced today, but some company's trying to replace the Humvee. And this thing, the Akrinvi, will eventually replace them. Okay, so for our Akrinvi, we're going to be testing this out at the, uh... Not just to test out, we'll just get the track time of the, uh... The Top Gear track and we'll get a uh, time out of this, see how it compares to other vehicles, which... is probably going to be in the last. Alright. That started out, so we got a lap time of 2 minutes, 56 seconds, 77 milliseconds. And as I compare this to it right now, it is indeed in last place behind the Brutus, which got a lap time of 2 minutes, 2 seconds, and 5 milliseconds. And in last place, the last place, a hand-pedaled Porsche vehicle got like 18 minutes, 37 seconds, 0 milliseconds. So 18.37 exact with the... Uh, the hand pedal Porsche, which was the last vehicle, but it doesn't really count because that's a pedal vehicle. And since we tested this out on the track, we are in last place of motor vehicles testing it on this track if this were to be done on an actual Top Gear course. Or Top Gear lap time test track, time trial, whatever. Alright, so let's get this saved and get this sent over to BMG Drive and test this out. Okay, so I spawned this up and. We got a problem here. So, the exhaust pipes are literally a mile away from... Is it actually on the ground? Hold up. Here, I'll get this guy rolling. Get it away. Okay, good. Now, since it said it was getting wheel spinning, Jesus Christ, this is like brutally black. I don't know if it's because of a mod issue or something. See, lights work and these are indicators. I don't know why the mod says uh, the uh, indicator shows the headlight. This asks it's a headlight, but this is an indicator. Weird. Okay, so we've got no reverse lights. Are these brake lights also, yep, they're also indicators too. Good enough. Now, wheel spin. Nope. Y'all lying to me. Y'all lying to me, kill Rob. Okay, this grinding noise, the exhaust is just a flat out annoying. Now the brakes. 
Oh god. Damn bad. Okay. This is actually pretty bad. This... The exhaust is somehow grinding on the ground. I don't know if this is a, a mod issue or what, because... One time, on uh, my own free time, I exported a uh, 90s NASCAR based off the Monte Carlo. I don't know if it is made by said nudes, but, or somebody else. But, uh, the exhaust, same thing, the exhaust, but instead it's embedded into the, in the ground, and you can't move it anywhere. You gotta, like, lift your car up, and somehow get it through the ground without clipping anything, and your car goes in a straight line without any other issues whatsoever. So, this field goal is not as bad, but, okay, we're losing revs down here. I think I could have, uh, made it kept at like an 80 or a 70 with uh, the gear selection, but since military vehicles, you don't really care about speed. You only care about power. So, for that, let's try to jump this off a cliff. Best as we can. There goes the bull bar. We're just off-roading until we find something. Is there a cliff up there, or is that just a hill? That's just a hill. Let's just find a cliff. Find a cliff right now. This is this is pretty stupid. Hello, Mr. Cliff. Cliff, Cliffy. Oh, God, there's a tire. <laughs> I didn't even see the, the frickin' rock there. I was just paying attention to the car, the exhaust, if it doesn't do anything wrong, and... Ow. Would this do anything better? How about this cliff? Just jump off here. Right here. Right in here. Okay, get the slow-mo ready. And let's get a camera going. Right, it's gonna drop right here. Okay, UI. Gotta follow along with it. Damn trees in the way. There goes the bull bar. Uh, let's get back to normal. It's full speed. And then four times. Compensate for the camera. And right in the back. And it's somehow still working. Get the UI back and flip this over. Since this vehicle says it's pretty heavy, but no, it just still gets tossed around like a uh, Freaking matchbox car. It's real easily. Yeah, real easily. It says the thing weighed like 13,000 pounds. That's like over six tons this vehicle weighs. Okay, just to wrap up the uh, general testing of this map. So I got myself spawned here with this five foot long, six, seven foot long exhaust pipe. Got myself here. I'm going to be ramming several vehicles. One is this little basic Grand Marshal. As our first vehicle. Second one, the Abisha Kashir with this loud V6 engine. Third one, a mod of a uh, H series, a uh, an RV. It's our third vehicle. Fourth and fifth stacked together. I think I could have done more, but we'll see how two works out. We got two Ibishu, uh Sunbursts, the 1.8 liter. And to wrap it up, we'll slam into the. Uh, the freaking cement mixer with the reverse thing going off. And I test this out, see if it'll see if it'll hit all of those vehicles in one try. If this passes, we'll try to do one more and this time up the difficulty and then we'll go to a different map. So I'm gonna start things off in three, two, one, start. That rev. And there goes the exhaust pipes going off. Alright, first off, let's go to two times for the Grand Marshal. Fight out T, boned him. Good. And get out the way. Next is the Kashira, right here. Four times. Got him good right there. Next. Getting some lag spikes. The Vanster H45 RV. Third gear. Two times. Four times. See, eight times. Right on impact. Eight times. 
Jeez, there, there goes the cab. And can we free ourselves? Well, we had to reverse once to free ourselves. If this thing stops and goes. Alright, so the third one, the Vanster, it made us stop and reverse, so... That's okay. So now we're going to come up to these sunbursts. Both of these guys, CFDs will try to stop us. We can go right beside them. Four times. Got him there. It's funny, the second one doesn't have too much damage. Even though he literally ate... ...my dust. And I don't know if it's the first or the second one they flattened his tires. Told him to get him away. I want to see how... I want to do, do a crush test next time, see how that works out. So the second one, the sunburst made us reverse. And now, let's see how far it'll take us with the, uh... The T series. Let's see how it goes. We'll make a subscribe to PewDiePie. For real. Okay. All right. Let's get a camera set up here. Freeze physics. Get close. And I think this would be a good camera angle. Alt U. And hold on. Let's just double check. Okay. No. Okay. There it goes. I would say double check just in case if I am freezing. Not freezing physics, but slowing down upon the crash. Okay. Here it comes around 50 miles an hour. Alright, here we go. 16, and 100. And collision. I say the frickin' Acrinivy is kind of, uh... Its hood's really crinkling up quite a bit. Okay, go to 16. This guy fall through. Alright, really, I actually fall through. There we go. There goes the, the funnel. Okay, eight times. Full. That literally put the, the freaking Crinvy to a dead stop. And I'm stuck. So is it the thing leaking its radiator? Is it me or the Crinvy? The Crinvy's radiator is leaking. <laughs> well. That ain't good. Alright, this time... Let's, let's bring a vehicle over. Let's just bring any type of vehicle. Let's just bring out the, uh... uh bring the, the Legrand. And see, it try a crush test because... I see on BMG, it says it weighed 13,000 pounds. That's quite a bit, ain't it? Alright, here we go. Gears to Legrand. And, um... I may have to do the world editor for this one. Let's just do world editor. So I can go to F11, jump into map editor. And we gotta find the the player, which is me, at the Crinvy. And we have to freeze physics, so let's do that. And eh, hello. Alright, do that. Go up some. Well, up a little bit. You know, let's just go free cam, just in case things make things worse. Alright, that. Drop it kind of close to there. Good. Bring it back. Forward. Back. This is kind of weird. Forward. And a little bit more back. Here we go. And drop it down some. And now, go back into the editor. Get out of the editor. And see if the crush test happen. So, Vehicle's on top. I can maybe like a eight inch gap between one another. And let's see how it goes. So let me full screen myself. 100 times slow-mo. Hide the UI in case that gets in the way. And it's kind of gonna be a little bit difficult. You know what? Uh, let's just do free cam and then we'll do an interior of the LeGrand. So right now, unpause. Might have to speed it up a little. There he goes, hey, hello. Here comes the drop. Here comes the drop. It's actually kind of difficult to get a camera angle. Right here. Oh yeah, that's really crushing it. Just perfectly right on top. It's freaking wobbling. Okay, let's get a let's get a camera to Legrand. What's it like when the 
inside. <laughs> yeah, if you're inside, you, you're, you're probably dead. What's it like? Yeah, certainly dead, or your skull, you got a good, pretty good skull fracture. Uh, nah, you're dead. Just look at that. Pastor's dead, back seat's dead, seats are crushed. And surprisingly, none of the interior, like the cages or nothing, has been deformed. And it's carrying it! Are you kidding me? I'm actually carrying the, the Akrinvi. This is pretty stupid. How about any wild maneuvers? Will this shake it off or not? Nah? I'm starting to. I'm starting to shake this off, but it ain't working. How about some bumps? Nope, they ain't much of a bump. How about go off-road right here? Go off-road, see how it works. And radiator fan's been broken. Alright. Good enough. So for our second and last test of our smashing durability test of this vehicle before we just jump this off a freaking cliff to end the video, we up to difficulty, and first we're going to be starting off by smashing into this off-roading um, gavel roamer, just one of them. And three of these guys, the uh, the half half mobile that I have made an automation, and it's it's quite popular. But it sucks. I try to put these in park, and they still glitch forward. I don't know if it's the, uh, the power to weight ratio because it's got a powerful Vix V16 engine, and it's just moving us forward. And I put two bowers up here and uh, try to hold these together, and they're doing a good job. So smash into three of these guys. Next is another one of my cars attached to three propane tanks. All lined up, and after smashing those tanks together, we'll smash into the uh, the shoreline, which was my first most popular JMC car brands that I made. You know, let's make this uh, a little bit closer. Stand this a little bit upright and drop. Careful, 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 careful. Crap. At least I set the position, like the uh, respawn position of all of them, in case this fails. Well, you don't have to go to map editor or drag these around again. Okay, set it down gently. Rio, and set this up a little bit more. And that's good. After that, smashing into two empty trailers right here, some dry van trailers. And last but not least, let's see if this will at least budge or dent the ATTE. One of the most powerful and almost unstoppable vehicles in BMG Drive. So let's start this off with the second durability test of the Akrin V. In three, two, one, start. That's funny, you kind of get that rev right there once you start up. And two, I'm kind of getting some frame drops. I'm, getting, I'm averaging like a 20 frames per second because all these vehicles are loaded in. So first hit. Around 40 miles an hour. Uh, I hit the FN key, but we got a pretty decent hit right there. This guy, gotta watch out for the Boward. Watch out for the Boward. Here we go. Perfect smash. Just avoided the Bowards. Second one, it really got dented, including this guy right here. Except for the front end dents because, oh, there's one right there. I would say, except for the front end dents, because if it's smashing into the bollards, that really doesn't count that much, but we'll assess the damages as soon as we're doing it. I don't think I assessed the damages that much in the last test. I don't think I did. Okay, number two, number three, the shoreline with propane tanks, see how much damage it'll take. Alright, we'll go to 16 on collision. 16. It's gonna hit all of them. Oh my god, tires deflated, radiator fan broken, we doing a wheelie, son. We doing a wheelie. And second of all, that car is glitching into the matrix. Yep, some of the material has been shredded right off. Ooh, that's a hard landing. I don't think the military can appreciate this. We had second gear. I think... This might be it. Yep, it's riding on the rims. We're going like 16 miles an hour. 
At least it's good enough to get the hell out of there if you're in a, in a battle. But it ain't good enough. And I think we're gonna last up to the dry van trailers. And this would probably end it. Right? About... Here. <laughs> Wait, can it go? Nope. Nope, it failed. Round number two. We're just gonna be as is, just smashing the drive van trailers and see if it'll dent the ATT. So we're, we're, it's round number two. In three, two, one, start. And the old vroom. Right when you hit the gas pedal, just to shift this in the first. Did not shift in the first gear to get it going. I think it goes neutral and then first gear. So like I said, after we're done, we're gonna assess all the damages of each vehicle. As soon as we're done, avoid that guy. And the propane tanks, it's still got the smoke in the middle from where I hit the, the thing, and there goes the shoreline. Alright, get this under control. Alright, get 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 the ult key ready. And start to slow this down. We're going 51, 50 miles an hour. Let's do 16, right here. 16. Ooh, jeez. Let's see, can I get out of my way? Sort of, did some, quite a bit of damage, let's see right now. Oh yeah, quite a lot of damage in the front end. And now let's see if it'll at least dent the ATT. Let's see, let we'll, me downgrade the uh, range box one in case this breaks on us. Yep, it broke on us. No, at least try to give an excuse just to go a little bit faster, at least get more power down. Okay, right here. Will it dent the ATTE? Will it at least do something? Alright, get a camera going at 50 miles an hour and we're kind of dropping speed a little. Okay. Alright, I'm still holding the throttle down. Hide the UI. 16. Steer into it a little. Come on, get a better camera going. Right here. 16 times and... Oh, it bent the wheel. Eight, four, full. That did that bent the wheel quite a bit, but I think it's still drivable. Let's see, load this up and then just power down. You know, let's see if it'll survive being crushed. Ram right into it. It can kind of take it. Oh yeah, it can take it quite a bit, but... Ain't that bad. Yeah, it's kind of held, holding up. Dude, do it one more time. Just back straight into it. They say it wanted to roll over. That's good enough. Alright, now the damages and... Just turn the engine off because you're always being starved. Okay, for the damages, roll this guy over on its roof, uh, back on its wheels, and check this out. Back seat, uh, yeah, you're you're not gonna survive. So a significant dent right there. That's probably where the area of impact I hit. Doors open. Yeah, I think that's where the area of impact I hit is on the right side, and that really did. did Quite a bit of damage. Funny, it didn't even damage like the wheels or nothing. Alright, that's our bollards from earlier. How do these guys do? These guys are like merged together. Which I'll pull this guy back. Oh no, they're merged. Yep, they merged together. This guys ain't doing a good day. Yep, they ain't having a good day. Him, uh, he's busted up. And this guy, he probably survived. Yep, just significant front end damage. Probably because of the bollard, or or what? Some minimal side damage. I don't know if it's from the bollard or what. I think it's from the bollard. And propane tanks didn't survive because they blew up. And for the shoreline, is that the spring? Oh, uh, that's the spring, ain't it? It's or brake line. That's it's it's out of here. <laughs> It's got that freaking red line there, and 
I'm surprised when he didn't cause any instability issues. Like, I thought those three propane tanks were too much for the game to handle. All right, bring this back more. And let's not include that. Yep, all spiky. All bad. And the trailers, this guy rolled over. And this guy suffered a pretty huge dent. Yeah. Dent there. How this guy? Oh, not, not, not much damage. And the ATT didn't really suffer any damage. It just took a pretty good beating on the side. Like where the wheels are at, but they look the line. Right? That's kind of a line. And that's a line. I don't know if it's me or that is missed the line. Like, I did get the wheel. No, it's a line. Looks a line. Yeah, no real damage. Yeah, there's no real damage in the ATTE, surprisingly. I thought it would at least do something. And surprisingly, it still hasn't overheating yet. Alright. Now, to wrap the video up, let's uh, drop this sucker off. To, uh, let's go to Budo Slope. We're gonna crash this into, uh, the wall and jump it off one of the ramps and end it. What's messed up since the exhaust pipes are a mile away. I don't know if you can see, we got the exhaust smoke coming way out the back. Yep. I don't know if it's the, uh, a body issue or what that's causing the vehicle to have this freakishly long exhaust pipe. So first off... We're going to drive this down straight down the little wall thingy at high speed, see how fast this thing goes. And we're going to over rev this thing already. And prepare your ears. Prepare your ears. There we go. And we're still increasing speed. Clutch overheating. <laughs> yep. Okay, watch out. Watch for a ramp. 200 miles an hour. 220. Alright, great. Slow this down. Even more, even more. And set the camera up. Okay, get ready. Here we go. Here we go. Alright, around 240 miles an hour. About 240. This impact right here. Okay, final. Final impact. <laughs> and the exhaust pipes get uh, get get swallowed. <laughs> and there's the other one. Yep, there's the bull bar. And the exhaust pipes say, "I don't like broccoli." Just spits it right out. Where's the bull bar? <laughs> Is that the? Okay, I'm hearing that burpy sound. I don't know if that's the fire or what. Sorry, tire. I want to see the damage, and then we can jump this straight off the, the jump there. Next damage. Damage. Okay. It's significant. Let's put it that way. It's a frickin' rectangle on wheels. <laughs> yep, rectangle on wheels. That's how you solve. That's how you solve it. And now I believe, is this the jump? Or the one next to it is? I think it's the one next to it, this guy, right? This guy, or... No, it's this guy. This tube ramp. So, stop. Bammer time. Drop down here. And then, as soon as we drop, we'll call... The video quits. That took you like an hour to shift. And... Here's... Kinda of weird to car is starting to break a little. Okay, here we come. We exit in the tube. And a dirt. You know, the ramp at the speed of 234. There goes the tire. It's kinda of weird. If it lands on the exhaust pipes, I don't know what it'll do. High clutch temperature. There you have it, okay. Here it comes. What will happen to the exhaust pipes? They just get eaten. Right? 
let's just get a camera like this and then just do that. There you go. Significant damage in the front end. Just shorten it. And where there it goes to bull bar. <laughs> How far is it gonna go? It's still it's still it's still bouncing. And it rests right there. Wow, well, kinda like a several hundred feet from it, and the exhaust pipes are pointing straight up again. Well, lift that thing up quite a well, fire another foot right there in the back end, and all the tires are flat, and we can't go because I over revved the engine, and which unfortunately broke it. So for this vehicle, if the exhaust pipes were like normal, like it would have been hanging like down here somewhere, this would have been at least a little bit better. And two, at least try to revise this one day. But I'm not gonna make a revision video, but at least personally revive it and revise it and uh, lower the gear ratio to like a, a 60 or 70 spacing. To at least make this a little more drivable, especially at third gear. At least reach it near highway speeds. So this wraps up this video with automation and beam and G drive of the Akrin V. So this has been Mr. Jack and Triple Zero. I'll see you in the next video.